Hi guys. This will be my last recording for today. It's going to be slow, slow paced. I know most of my stuff is slow paced, but I'm not feeling 100% right now. I hope it's not Corona. That wouldn't be fun. I know there's some crazy weather going on outside. Um, but I want to go ahead and jump right into this. Oh, rules for radicals. Uh, I have reached what I consider the end of rule one. So if you don't know much about um, the book Rules for Radicals, there's basically like 12 things that Rules for Radicals deals with. These are the, like the 12 rules. Um, and I've reached the end of Rule 1. And so what I plan on doing is probably not... There might be better ways to teach this, but I want to give you all the information first and then tell you what Rule 1 is. Instead of telling you what the rule is and then explaining it through a host of videos. Um, and so before I get to the 12 rules, I'm just going to read you the first rule first. But I want to give you a little bit of background history on Alinsky, just a little. Uh, he was born in 1909. And he was absolutely a communist Marxist. Um, that is just who he, through and through. Um, he's the guy who invented maybe established the tactics um, of infiltration into like the government, into media, into Hollywood today. Um, everything we're seeing right now, colleges, why, why are all of the major institutions in the United States controlled by the left, right? It's this guy. This guy was the mastermind. He's a genius. Uh, Hillary Clinton did her her thesis on this guy. I've read her thesis. Um, Barack Obama was a huge fan of Alinsky. They, they all quote him. Um, this guy is probably the most influential thinker in the 20th century. Um, maybe not influential, maybe Im impactful, had the most impact maybe um, because of, of in the United States because of how his things were put into practice. And they were put into practice everywhere. And so he is the reason why the 60s um, Cultural Revolution actually took off. They were all using this guy's um, playbook. And he was learning, and he was, he was listening, and he was paying attention, and he was practicing what he preached. He, he staged many, many um, union riots, union strikes, that sort of things in the United States back in those days. Um, just a fascinating study of a human. I consider him evil, um, but that might be a strong word, but it might not. So without further ado, with just that little bit of background, the first rule uh, for rules for radicals is that um, power, okay, that, that's his, his whole premise. He, he sees the world as, you know, just power and those who have it and those who don't. Somewhat like the critical theory uh, that has that came out of Frankfurt and Cambridge, um, but the first rule is like power is not only the power that you have, but it's what the enemy thinks you have. It's what your opposition think you have. So your power is not just what you have; it's what they think you have, and you can see this so clearly in the world today because you have this small radical minority that are so loud, so vocal. Because they control all the institutions, right? The Marxists in the United States control nearly every facet of institutional power in our country. Um, the colleges, the government, you know, the, the, the judicial, not quite the legislature. Um, during the Obama presidency, they controlled the executive branch. Um, and so they, they just kept amplifying their voice until the quote-unquote silent majority in the U.S. thought that they were the minority. And even right now, if you believe in free speech, you believe you think you're in the minority when technically you're not. You know, there are a lot of idiots out there who, who don't know that they believe in free speech, but they do. Not everybody who thinks they're a leftist is actually a leftist. Uh, once they learn what it is, they're like, whoa, I guess I'm a liberal. 
and that puts me on the conservative side of things now. It's very interesting to watch these awakenings. But uh, when you talk about like leadership, it is so important that a leader understand that the power and authority you have is it's not just limited to what you have. It's limited to what you have and other people think you have. Um, in fact, what they think you have might even be more important than the power that you hold. Because if people think you hold all power, huge, vast amounts of power, you can actually leverage that non-existent power into doing a lot of things. Uh, into, And you see this when, um, whenever the left activates their militant wing, you know, they'll have like, you know, they'll scare and bully and push people into boycotts and shutting people down. Uh, when in all reality, most Americans are like, no, that's not what we're for. Like 75, 76% of Americans are against defunding the police, right? And the 24, 25% who think they are, about half of them really are against it too. They don't understand. You know, they think defund means, you know, giving more money to social workers, right? They don't they don't think that defunding the police means more rapes, more kidnappings, more sex trafficking, more murders. You know, they're they're thinking, you know, kind of a utopian deal. And so you've got a little 10% maybe who actually are want to defund the police. Uh, and and I, I think a lot of the 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 studies and the reports show this, the polls and such. Um but if if you can seem bigger and tougher than you are, people will naturally do what you want. That when you view the world through power. And so that is why it's so important for Christians to get out and to um, maybe not protest, but protest. Uh, send a little tweet or Facebook message to your representative saying, hey, you know, we're praying for you. Make sure you do right on this bill, you know. Uh, you you put social media pressure on people, and they see large amounts of of um, Christians standing up. They'll begin to act right. Um, you know, it's it's a saying in my family is sometimes you have to help people act right uh, because on on their own humans tend to just do what's ever what is ever in their best interest. And for instance, you see police. Sometimes it's a lot easier. Not and I'm not I'm not. Um, I am not dissing on the police, but it's a lot easier sometimes to let a mob burn a building down than it is to go and arrest 500 people. Um, so that that's part of what happens. Sometimes you have to help people do right. You know, you have to help them. And if 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 Christians stand up and say, you know, this is what we believe, this is where we stand, our country will get better. So as long as we can understand they're they're trying to amplify their voice and we need to recognize that uh, then I think Christians have a real shot at, at turning this country back towards a more godly end so one last time rule number one power is not only what you have but what the enemy thinks you have <laughs>